So let's paint the picture today. It's your last day of work. After this, no more paychecks are coming in. So how did you get to that place where you made the decision on whether or not it was time to retire? Hi, my name is Emlyn Miles Mattingly. I am the founder and president of Gen Next Wealth, a fee-only retirement planning firm helping people bring clarity, harmony, and focus to their retirement. So what I was talking about before is now that you've retired and you've taken that step into the rest are the best part of your life. What are you going to do? How are we going to get income? And I think it's so scary, right? When you begin to get to that place where now you've made the decision and now you're out on your own. And so we have to understand where we're going to get our income from. And this is the decision that you probably made before you you know, decided to quit, right? Before you decided to retire. So understanding these income streams is so important. And I, I, it really has a lot to do with the age. We're going to talk about someone that just uses them as an example of someone that retired at their retirement age. So let's say they're 65 and they retire. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you're getting ready to retire is understanding where your income is going to come from, right? Sometimes you're going to have pensions and some people are going to have social security and some people are going to have um, all sorts of different things. You're going to have some tax taxable accounts. You're going to have some tax-free accounts. So there's a lot of different places where you have money. You have that money in the bank money. Um, and what happens with this is when you're looking at this to make this decision, it's all about when you're going to retire. If you were going to retire and you're going to be able to withdraw money from your retirement accounts, then that gives you a little extra money that you can draw from. However, the strategy in which you draw it from is very important. So a lot of times what I'm seeing people do is they are starting with their buckets, right? So you have your tax deferred bucket. Okay. And so when we talk about our tax deferred bucket, what's going to happen is this is going to be all of your IRAs or at least your traditional IRAs. Um, what's going to happen first thing is you're probably going to remove your money from your 401ks that you have at your work or whatever deferred retirement type of plan you have at work. Um, it's also very important that you have you know, enough cash to be able to live on. So what we try to do is there's a combination of different things that you're going to be doing when you're pulling these assets. One of the things that you're going to be doing is understanding when these assets are going to become available to you. So case in point, let's say this one uh, client we had, we are trying to get to $100,000 of income. So when you were in your working years after taxes, you had about $100,000 of income. So one way that we've done this is I've been able to look at different um, income sources that people have in different pensions. And and so one of the good things about uh, when you're retiring at 65 is you you have some of these pensions available to you. Um, one of the pensions that I've seen are not necessarily the type of pensions. I had this in particular client, they had two pensions available to them. Now that pension was going to, that pension income was going to add up to about $20,000 of what they needed to make in retirement, right? We said, we're trying to get to a hundred thousand dollar income. So the first place that we were able to look for, we said, okay, where are the fixed income things coming in? Things that are going to come into you automatically. So the first fixed income was the pension that covered about $20,000 of the income that this person was going to need to reach that $100,000. Now, let's go to the next source of income. The next source of income is going to come from their social security. Now, when this person got to full retirement age, um, and, and, you know, typically full retirement age for most people is going to be in between 66 and 67 to based, based on when you were born. And so when you look at this and you know that you're going to get this Social Security coming to you. So we knew that at full retirement age for this person, they were going to get about $40,000 um, of revenue or of, of income from Social Security. So we got our first 20 from the pensions, right? Our second amount of money, which is the 40,000, that started to come from Social Security. That gets us to 60,000. Now we're at 60, we got to get 40,000 more. So then what we do is we can look at the, the portfolio assets at this point, right? What do the portfolio assets look like? Or do you have, you know, some cash equivalent assets? Sometimes people like to use cash or they'll use, you know, any combination of things. For this in particular one, we looked at some of the assets that we had in her qualified accounts. So when we looked at qualified accounts, this was a place where we could say, OK, now we have this amount of money in this qualified account. We have a shortfall in the income need that we have of about forty thousand dollars. So in this example, we had a portfolio. We had well over uh, I want to say we had about one point five million dollars in this portfolio for that portfolio to be able to uh, give us 
the $40,000 extra that we needed. It was a very simple, easy drawdown calculation on there. And this person was able to make the decision very easily about whether or not it was time to retire. So when you think about this, I think understanding where your income is going to come from. This was one example. This was some social security. This was a little bit of pension. This was also some of the portfolio assets that were drawn down. On other sides, sometimes people have to start with a little more cash. And the reason why we do this is because if you are retiring early, Let's say you're going to retire before 59 and a half. Um, I've had some people that retired at about 55. I've had people retire a little bit earlier than that. But let's just say case in point 55. Now, if you're retiring at 55 and you don't have, um, you know, you have your, you have your retirement assets, right, which you can access uh, until 59 and a half, uh, unless you do, there's some special uh, things that you can do to withdraw the money before that. Well, let's just say you didn't do that. Let's say you didn't do a 72T. Um, you would still have to figure out how you were going to live in that amount of time that you had before you had access to your retirement funds. A lot of times people will, um, this is, I've seen a lot of people use this strategy where they will actually take some of the cash that they have and withdraw that and use that as income or live off of the cash that they have. Now, the reason why this is uh, an interesting strategy is because it does really minimize the amount of money that you pay in taxes. Now, obviously, you're going to be taking away money from your current you know, cash available to uh, to live on. But what we've seen with this is that you can continue to defer the taxes on some of these assets that you have, right? And if you can defer those taxes for a little while, even while you're not, you know, in this in this in particular instance, you're not going to be uh, deferring the taxes. Just you're still deferring the taxes, but you're not of age. So you come up with a strategy where you figure out how much money you need to live on. And I think this really gets into understanding the expenses, right? If you don't understand your expenses, then it's going to be hard for you to project how much money you're going to need to live on from your savings. So a lot of times people will go through um, this is usually someone that's managed debt very, very well, right? So the, maybe the house is paid off, maybe your cars are paid off, and there's not a lot of extra money that you're spending on debt. This uh, lends itself to a place where you can retire early, right? And if you're retiring at that 55 before you know, you're know getting your Social Security and before you're getting these other things, the reason why it's okay for you to use some of your cash there is because we know that we have fixed income waiting for us at certain ages, Right. In the first example, we talked about when someone turns 65 or when they reach full retirement age, they have some of those pension things coming. They have a pension coming in. Then at full retirement age, they had their Social Security coming in. And that Social Security and pension made up about sixty thousand dollars of the income that they were needing to make to get to 100. So understand this. If you do have to draw down some of your cash to uh to bridge the gap, if you will, understand that's why you did it. So you could bridge the gap. And now understanding that you do have some guaranteed money coming to you later. These are little tips and little things that I think that are very important to you uh, and very important to think about when you are making the decision on whether or not it's time to retire. So as I said before, my name is Inland Miles Mattingly, uh, here the founder of Gen Next Wealth, the retirement planning firm. Until next time, hopefully you enjoy these tips. <laughs>